Yo, yo guys, welcome back in today, and I'm so excited to do this video today because I'm a huge car guy, right? I'm into the car industry, the car scene. I used to work for car companies back in the day for a while, well, more than a while. So I'm pretty well versed in the car world. It truly is a whole world. I know some of you guys don't care about cars and might not actually be into cars, but there is literally a whole industry and a whole world and people all around the world that participate in their region and obviously like trends that are going on around the world. I love Japanese cars. I'm a Japanese guy, but a lot of people like American muscle or European as such as German or Italian or Swedish cars like Volvo or Italian cars like Lamborghini, Ferrari, German cars like Porsche, Audi, Volkswagen, Mercedes Benz, right? So with all that being said, we have to understand that there's different industries. There's manufacturers, there's people that actually make the cars, right? They get materials, they put all this together and they make the cars. They have to spend millions and billions of dollars a year in R&D, which is research and development to make a car more fuel efficient or to make it more aerodynamic, which aerodynamics and how much gas you can spit in the motor and how much air you can put into the motor. Cause a motor is just a big air pump that explodes that combust right so you're adding fuel spark air to make an explosion and then you're doing that to make the piston go up and down so you can obviously transfer energy from the piston which is the bore which is round right that's a piston and then there's a rod like your arm that goes up and down and the piston is the top of your fist and when there's an explosion within that cylinder it actually helps the rod go down and since there's four cylinders, V6, V8s, inline sixes, V10s, V12s, W16s, right? You might not have ever heard of some of these engines, but they're really, really big engines. With the other pistons going down, this piston can go up like that, right? So that's the motion of a motor. So if there's four cylinders, two in the middle might go down at the same time, and then two on the outside might go up and back and forth, back and forth. You're doing that to, to rotate the crankshaft right and then rotating the crankshaft leads to the flywheel and your transmission right and then it leads to a, a drive shaft and the drive shaft goes all the way back to your rear wheels and turns your real rear wheels or all-wheel drive or front wheel drive if only the front are turning so there's a lot of things that go on in the car industry there's car magazines there's people that just follow people that modify their cars there are car manufacturers like Honda, like Toyota, like Mercedes-Benz, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Lexus, Acura that create these vehicles and put millions and billions of dollars of research every year to make a car more fuel efficient or in more aerodynamic and perform better, get more power, but consume less gas or electricity if it's an electric car. And then there's also the motorsport side of it, which those companies can compete in like F1, right? which is arguably the biggest motorsport in the world, car motorsport. And then you have other motorsports like rally, right? Like these different specs of racing, rally, F1, drifting, Gymkhana, um, time attack, right? There's literally hundreds of them, right? And then within all those types of racing, you can be a professional race car driver with, within those type of racings. And then if you're an amateur driver for anyone watching all around the world, especially in Africa, if you're an amateur driver, you have to work your way up to becoming a professional, right? So you might start off with a certain spec of slower sports car, and then you move your way up through the classes, and then you eventually become a professional, you know, time attack, a little different because you're racing against the clock and not racing against somebody else. But you guys can see how excited I am right now. I'm talking car talk. I got to get to the actual video. But today we're going to be talking about Kantanka, which is a Ghana based car company and we're going to be looking at Kantanka and I'm going to be very honest and somewhat brutal in some aspects but I might not be as brutal because I understand how how expensive and how hard it is to even create a car company right and I understand the dynamics of the industry that a lot of people don't understand which is one thing I want to touch on right now I don't know how much of this car is truly made 100% in Ghana but we will see and I say that not as disrespect, but from a knowledgeable standpoint in the car industry that a lot of companies use engines or 
parts from other countries that can supply it, right? Because one country might not make everything that needs to be made to go onto that car. And even if they did economically, sometimes it's smarter to go to a different country that's cheaper, obviously, and obtain that part and have deals or contracts with those people. Hopefully if you're being like, you know, good about it and obtain those parts from the other country, import them. And that could actually be cheaper on a grand mass, right? Like you got to think about it. These companies are huge companies, corporations. So they're thinking about uh, buying things or you have to think about buying things in bulk mass, right? Like if you have billions of dollars company, hundreds of billions of dollars, you're buying things in a big abundance that maybe a smaller car company can't buy it at, right? For instance, maybe Katanka or maybe when Hyundai start, first started, you know, growing in Korea, in South Korea, what is it, in the 80s, if, I, if I'm correct, that Hyundai was created. So today we're going to be talking about Katanka. And Katanka is, as we can see right here, Katanka is an automobile, right? A Ghana-based automotive assembler and manufacturer. So they assemble vehicles, right? doesn't mean that they're exactly from Ghana, maybe, but they assemble vehicles. They can maybe assemble other vehicles and then they manufacture vehicles. So manufacturing vehicles obviously is letting you know that, okay, Katanka, they make vehicles, right? By Quadwo, Safo, Katanka, and incorporated as a limit liability company, which is a LLC, right? Limit liability company. In 2004, to research into the automotive industry and obviously, you know, bring more Kantanka cars to Ghana. So knowing this backstory, uh, Mr. Kantanka Sr., I would call him, or the uh, creator of Kantanka, if I'm correct, his son actually a couple years ago took over the business aspect of Kantanka. So obviously, you know, Kantanka is a family ran car company, which is even amazing. I'm actually excited to look into it. I found out about Kantanka maybe about two years ago and I was just so interested in African brands because you don't really hear people talk about them a lot. And even in the car world, in the car industry, you don't really hear people talk about African brands that are coming up a lot. And uh, it's really interesting. I, I know South Africa has some car brands. I think Uganda has a car brand, if I'm correct. Ghana has a car brand. Don't know about Nigeria. Um, and I think if there was like whispers, I heard some of my Rwandan friends that in Rwanda, they have a Rwandan car company that started maybe like in 2018, 19, but I have to do more research into it. Um, so like I said, guys, I'm going to be somewhat brutally honest because I love cars and I've been in the car industry for a long time and I know, or I feel like I know the standards of what makes a great economy car or sports car or, um, truck, right? And obviously I've owned almost anything you could think of for the most part. So that's why I'm going to be somewhat brutally honest, but in a, from a loving place, right? Um, I can be sort of kind of cutthroat when it comes to the car world, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of us that are car guys are, you know, if you're in Africa and you're a car guy, I'm pretty sure you understand, or you're in America or Asia, or India, wherever you are, you, you know what I'm saying, right? So the first car we're going to look at right here, and I hope I can say this right, is the Amonama. So the Amonama, my first impression off of this, which I know exactly what this is, this is a affordable, small, entry level, economical four-door sedan. So with that being said, who plays in this space right now? At least, especially in North America, right? Because I'm in America. So who plays in this space right now in America? Maybe not so much in Ghana. I would have to do a little bit more research about that. But in America, you know, probably the Mitsubishi Mirage, right? Um, and, and, and cars within that class. I don't really know exactly how much this one costs, but me understanding how much money it takes to start a car company and how much it takes to source parts if you're not creating all the parts or majority of the parts, I would say that this is probably higher than a bigger company because a bigger company, even though Mitsubishi is still a very, very small company in the grand scheme of the world, in the car world, still it's bigger obviously and probably has more resources than Kantanka. So I don't know, I think the new Mitsubishi Mirage maybe, and I could be wrong about this because I haven't checked, but maybe it, between 13,500 13, American dollars or US dollars all the way up to maybe like $16,000, somewhere in that range. I would say like more like the 14 to 15,000 maybe. And so when I look at this car, 
does it give me the same feel as the Mitsubishi or Mirage since since this is what I'm probably going to compare it to because this is what I'm thinking about right now. And to be honest with you, if this was a 2020 car, which I'm pretty sure this one might not be, this one might be from a couple years ago, but even from a couple years ago, I would say that this is not a bad try. Um, the one thing that I would critique about this is that I never really found cars appealing, even smaller entry level cars, which I definitely understand this class, the 10,000 to like $20,000 class. It's, it's hard when you're under like 16,000 to make a car, you know, wider and more luxurious because, you know, you have a certain amount of money that you're building this vehicle for, right? And you're building for certain, certain type of people that want a entry level, you know, no frills type car. There's not going to be a lot of technology. There's not going to be a lot of luxuries as far as like very, very comfortable seats, right? In some car companies, they get it right. They understand how to distribute the pot of money that they're trying to use to create a car. Some car companies, let's say they sell at 15,000, maybe if it's a huge car company like Toyota, I don't know this for sure, but I'm just going off the top of my head, it might only cost them their lowest car, right? Their lowest Corolla, it might only cost them maybe less than like $7,000 a piece to, to, to make these cars. And it's probably not even that high, I'm just, Toyota is the big one of the biggest car companies in the world. If not, the, I think they might be the biggest car company. So they have a lot of power. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of resources. They have a lot of connections and they have a lot of relationships with companies that will give them cheaper prices because they're going to buy in a huge bulk mass. This is something that I have to reiterate in the car world because a lot of people compare car companies and they don't really understand the business side of it and the logistics. And if you understood, you could understand why, how hard and why some car companies cannot offer certain things. As sad as that is, as sad, I know all of us, you know, we want some car companies to be very luxurious or very economical, but give us luxury. But, you know, it's hard to please everybody. So you try to do the best you can. But when I look at this, this reminds me of a Suzuki, like an SX4 Suzuki. And, you know, a lot of people would not like this small, compact sedan. You know, they would not like that. And most people are like, this is too small. But in this league, you're thinking about college kids, people that, you know, need an affordable car with a family, you know, maybe they need something reliable, good on gas mileage and something that they can afford. And, you know, a lot of people will go for cars in this class that are looking for something like that, right? Like a around town run around car. Yeah, it might not be the most comfortable going across country, but around the city, you can make it work, right? So with this being said, I like the design as far as like the dimensions of the car. But what I would say is as far as the, the, the length of the car, I think the length of the car is good. The wheelbase, meaning from the front rim to the back rim, that's the wheelbase, right? And then you have the actual chassis, which is the actual, you take off the door, you take off the fenders, all that kind of stuff. And you see the bare uh, chassis. But those are two different things. Wheelbase between rim, the front rim to the back rim, that's wheelbase, right? And that has to do with how comfortable the car handles. It's not the only thing, but it's it's one thing. That's why you see a lot of luxury cars that are very, very long, because if you hit something in the front, you have a pothole or something, it takes longer for that energy to transfer to the rear. So therefore, the longer the car technically with other things like tires, suspension technology, as far as, um, you know, uh, uh, springs and shocks and, and, and dampeners, right? So this is what I would do with the design. On this design, I would basically get rid of the chrome, right? If it's not really real chrome or it's chrome plating, painting, right? Get rid of that, make the chassis a wider track, make it wider, right? The length of the car can stay the same. The wheelbase, maybe a little bit longer, but yeah, it's okay. Keep the wheelbase that way. Longer, not so many ripples. Sometimes in a lot of the car world, the best designs are the simplest designs. Once you get the simple design down, then you can start to slowly, every generation of the car, implement more and more of the Ghanaian, maybe like Ordinka symbols or something from Ghana into the design, right? And it doesn't necessarily have to mean the actual way the shape of the whole car looks, but the the symbol, right? The, the the accents inside the car, the the interior, right? The interior inserts, so that could be Kinti cloth, right? 
So we got to take what we see in Ghana and use that and use it at a high level. We should use it at a high, high, high level to where when you have these inserts in the car with Kinti cloth, it's the best Kinti cloth. The stitching, right? That's why it's very good in a car company to get the best upholsters that you can get and also try to get the best designers to design the cars that you can get as well as engineers because sometimes in the car world, a lot of people don't realize the designer will make this beautiful car on paper, right? He'll draw the, 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 the design, but then the engineers are like, Hey man, like either we don't have enough money and this won't work, or this is too aerodynamic and you know, or there's always things that an engineer will say, Hey, like this might not be possible with a certain amount of money, unless we're making like a supercar where money is no option, like a million dollar supercar. Yeah. You can get very extravagant on that because you have more money to work with to make things work that might not work within a smaller normal budget. But a lot of times the engineers and the designers go back and forth because the engineers are like, hey man, I don't know if this is gonna work for our budget and like your design is so radical, right? Like, I don't even know if there's even the materials to even make this or the design is so wide, right? I don't even know if it's realistic for the road. There's, there's, you know, when you park and you go into a shopping center, there's a lot of things behind it when you create a car. People don't realize this, it's a whole business. So I would take away from the chrome, I would take the chrome out. I would make a bigger, in the middle, a, a, little, a little bit bigger uh, grill. And I would use higher quality plastics to make nice, pick one or dinka symbol, right? Or pick a or dinka symbol with some type of like squiggly lines, right? And I would use that or dinka symbol as the actual design in the back of the grill. No chrome, just black. Then on the front logo, I would have a, the star, a better higher quality star, but all black, a black basically right here, a black square right to where it looks like it's tinted and then the star behind that and i think that would be a little bit better design i wish you know i knew cad which is a program where you can redesign cars i, I don't know what i'm actually going to learn it and i think you know the grill would be fine like this as long as you make it wide and flat you know a lot of the curves to me are scream economy car which of course that's what it is but to sell economy cars, it has to do a lot of different things. It has to be fuel efficient. It has to be reliable, but it also has to be stylish. This is sort of kind of why Honda is the leader and Toyota are the leaders in, you know, small compact cars and uh, even, you know, subcompact cars. Because if you look at the Corolla, it's very attractive for the price that you pay. If you look at the Honda Civic, I mean, probably the leader in the class of compact cars um, or subcompact cars, you know, this Honda Civic is a beautiful car for, for what you pay for it. It's a beautiful car, especially for economy cars, a beautiful car. So, you know, I would give this a six out of 10. I think it could be better. It's not a bad first try. Um, or, you know, whatever generation this is, I don't even know if this is the first of this generation, but whatever generation it is, this is not a bad first try. Um, but I think it could definitely be better. And I think for entry level car, which most people in Ghana are probably going to be buying, probably can afford, um, or if they can't afford it, this would be the first entry level car that they they, they would get when it whenever they could afford it, the average Ghanaian person could afford it. I think it should be a little bit more stylish, but not bad for the first try. I give it a six out of 10. That's actually pretty high for me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's some other cars that I would say, you know, are worse. And, you know, like these designs right here, like I said, it's it's good it's okay it doesn't look very very cheap but it doesn't look as as you know i don't want to say expensive because this is an entry-level car but it doesn't look as maybe appealing as it could be i think the bulbous style the round style that's a dying style uh, in design that's a little more so you know seems like early 2000s late 90s so I think that needs to be upgraded with a little bit of interior that we see right here. Um, you know, I, I don't think I have any other pictures of it right now, but the gauge clusters, they don't look bad for economy car. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with those gauge clusters. Um, a lot of gauge clusters 
aren't really looked at as far as being something that's very, very important when you're trying to make a car, you know, maybe for under $17,000 or six, or well, I would say more like $15,000. I mean, it's important, but it's not the most important thing. It's not like it's a sports car where sports car guys like me are going to be like, yo, the gauge cluster has got to be appealing. It's got to be sporty. It's got to have a certain a look, a classiness or aggressive or whatever type of car you're buying. Every car company has their own ethos in the own way that they do things and what they're about and their racing heritage and things of that nature so you know like i said overall i would give this car a six you know what i'm saying so let's look at a couple more pictures of it right here so you know the more that i look at it actually it's not really bad let's see it from the side it sort of reminds me it sort of gives me like mitsubishi mirage sedan vibes it gives me nissan Sentra vibes um and like i said guys i don't really know how old this is obviously it's within the last couple years so if you're from ghana if there's a newer model let me know but it looks like it's somewhat newer but like i said i do not think that this is bad at all what i think is is i think that because colors actually change things a little bit too and i was seeing it in silver and i would definitely not suggest if you're going to buy a Kantanka car i wouldn't suggest silver i don't suggest silver or gray on really too many cars at all. I don't even care if they're supercars because it's just not a, it's it's like a blah color, you know what I'm saying? Um, and color in body style and how the body is shaped, the, 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 the design, the shape of the body, how aerodynamic or how sleek it looks, that all plays a part into how a car is received by everyone else and yourself. And colors hide the lines of a car more than other colors right so a darker color can maybe show you more of the lines and the beautiness of a car right versus a lighter color like silver or something that might not show you that or maybe even white this just depends on what car it is but when i look at it right here this is not bad the only thing like i said the reason i give it a six is because i just don't like the frumpiness the of, of the front i don't like the the bulbous of the front it just screams economy car in the front the side, not bad, to be honest with you, not bad. Um, another thing I crit critique, even though it's an economy car, which this is not a bad thing, but the design of the wheel, if you're going to keep it like that, which that looks like a 15 inch wheel to me, maybe a 16, but it's probably a 15, 15 to 16. It's a lot of wheel gap between the, uh, the top of the fender and the top of the tire. There's a lot of wheel gap right there, which as a sport car guy, I hate, I hate that. But, uh, you know, this is an economy car, you know. But I, I would say the rim design, it's not bad. You know, typical five star. It sort of slants to the left a little bit. Um, so it's not bad at all. The actual spokes, they sort of slant a little bit. It's not bad, but I think a little bit more of a pilling uh, wheel could also help this car as well. And, you know, I don't really think anything else can really be done to an entry level economy car. To be honest with you, I wouldn't even offer a sedan. I'm going to be honest with you. Kantanka, if you're watching, I wouldn't offer a sedan. I would just offer a hatchback, you know. Um, and you know, if you could do something like that, I see a picture right here, but this says fully electric Kantanka. So I don't know if they're working on an electric car. If they are, I, I like that. Um, and maybe this might be the same chassis as, uh, and yeah, here's the, the, the owner's son. I, I'm correct. Well, he, he owns it now if I'm correct. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. I, li I like that you guys are going the EV way. You know, I'm not a big fan of electric, to be honest with you. I'm just traditional. I like combustion. I like, I like sound. I really don't want to live in a world where, you know, it's quiet. Um, but, you know, I don't hate electric either. I just just not in love with it yet. Maybe. I don't know if I ever will be. Um, but, you know, whatever is better for the earth is the right way. I'm more leaning toward hydrogen, but that's another story. So the next car we're going to go to is the Kantanka Mensa. Now, you know, like I said before, I don't really know 100% how many parts in uh, Ghana that they're making of this car and uh, how much they're assembling because in the car world, it's very normal for a lot of car brands that are coming up to use another car brand's chassis and parts and engine, right? So a lot of people would say, hey man, you know, the car should be 100% made, but there's not too many cars anywhere in the world, if any, that are made 100% in their country, right? So maybe 70%, 60%, 80%, 90%, whatever, but there's not too many car companies, even big car companies that make everything in their country. And even if they're making it under their name, it's still in a different country, right? So like Toyota in America, you know, North Toyota in North America. So I'm not even mad, and I know some people had issues about, you know, Kantanka using different parts from different countries 
probably more so Asia, somewhere in Asia, maybe China. Um, a lot of people, I've seen some people have issues with that uh, or, or engines, and I really don't have an issue with that. I can tell you guys don't understand the car industry because if you did, you would understand that majority of car companies do do that. Uh, for instance, if we want to pull it up right here to just let you know. So like I tell people this all the time, just like right here, right? Lotus has been using Toyota engines for years, most notably the 1.8 liter inline four from the Celica Matrix Corolla and more powering the Elise and the 3.5 liter V6, which comes from Camrys, right? In the Avor and the Lotus Exige. Now, if you guys have never seen a Lotus, it's a car company from the United Kingdom, from the UK. Um, and there's a lot of other car companies from the UK, right? Land Rover, Range Rover, uh, some very high-end luxury Rolls Royce, right? These are all from UK, a couple others that I'm missing. But the reason why would they use that? Well, because a lot of people don't realize if you're a car guy, you understand how amazing Toyota motors are, how amazing Honda motors are, and how many motorsports that Toyota, Honda, you know, Mitsubishi, Subaru, especially in Rally, Mitsubishi and Subaru have won throughout the whole world, right? And all these other Japanese companies. But a lot of people don't realize that Honda for a long time supplied McLaren, right? Oh, there you go. McLaren is another uh, supercar that makes supercar based company in UK, United Kingdom. McLaren, when it came to them racing on their racing side at the track, they use Honda Motors forever. Honda has been supplying McLaren Motors and McLaren has won with Honda Motors, if I'm correct. Honda also supplied for so long, still probably, I think it is. IndyCar. IndyCar is like the American version of F1, right? So F1 obviously is like soccer, how in America, football and basketball is the main sport, but all around the world, soccer is the most notable international biggest sport there is in the world. That's the same with F1. F1 arguably is the fastest, the most intense racing on a track, not off-road like rally, but on a track that you can get, right? So IndyCar is like America's version of F1, if I'm correct, Indy cars are a little bit heavier um, and they're not as powerful. So therefore power to rate ratio. Power to rate ratio means how much power, how much horsepower and torque do you have to push this weight? So if this is heavier, it's going to take more horsepower and torque to push that weight as quick as something that's lighter, right? And then, you know, you got other things like tires because if you make the power, it doesn't mean that you're just gonna go fast, you have to put the power to the ground, which is tires, suspension, gearing, all kind of other crazy stuff. The car world is really, really, really deep. But what I'm saying is that Lotus is a UK based company, car company that makes sports cars. But what do they do? They use Toyota motors. Now, you know, some Lotuses might, might have said in the past, I don't know for sure, I think, because I'm not the biggest Lotus guy as far as the history of Lotus, but they might have said powered by Toyota or Toyota under the Lotus symbol on the engine. Right now you might see Lotus, right? Some Lotuses and you might see the engine and it will say Lotus on it. But that is a Toyota V6 Camry motor because it looks just like the one in the Camry. And when you put a different motor in a different chassis, right? In a different body of a car, you put a different motor, in a different chassis, that motor, could work in that car because that chassis, the bones of it, right? The structure of it is different. So you just given it, you just given that car a new heart, right? Somebody has surgery, they have a bad heart, but they're they're physically fit like me, but I have a bad heart. Oh, oh man, I'm dying. Take the heart out, give me a new heart, which is the Toyota motor, right? And then when you put that new motor in that new heart, this car can perform better with that motor than a Toyota Camry because that Toyota Camry is somewhat fat. You could say it's like a fat person, even though I'm not trying to body shame, but I'm just being realistic here with you guys. The Camry might be more of a fatter person. It's front wheel drive. It was made more to be for families, right? Like family haulers. It wasn't really made to be a sports car. It's a little sporty, but it really wasn't made to be a hardcore 100% sports car. The Lotus is 100% sports car. So you take that motor because Lotus and Toyota have a deal with each other and you put it in your sports car, so now you don't have to make your motors, but you just make the chassis, you save money, right? And, and also you might not be big enough to afford to do all that. So it's all a business. So when you look at Kantanka, and let's say that you know they have a car and they're sort of kind of doing the same thing, you can't be mad at them. That's how the car industry works, especially when you're a small car company, 
you have to grow and to grow with like anything in business until you can make enough money to where you can do everything in house. You have to have third parties that you get things from. That's just business. You know what I'm saying? That's just business. So anybody that's mad that Kantanka uses parts from, you know, Asian countries or China or wherever it might be. At the end of the day, you still got to think on both sides. Yes, you don't want them to be owned 100% by China, but then again, you have to have a start somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And that's just is the way it is. I mean, creating a car company is, <laughs> it's not easy, man. You know what I'm saying? Millions and billions and millions of dollars. This is not easy. You know what I'm saying? So let's look at the Mensa, right? So the Mensa, I like it. It's sort of kind of giving me, hmm. It's sort of kind of giving me like, Ford uh, Taurus, maybe vibes, maybe old, older Ford Taurus vibes, maybe early mid 2000. But it's also giving me Audi like A4, A4 vibes the way it looks, but probably the size is more A5. Um, but it's really nice, man. It's really nice. What is this? 125,000 Ghanaian dollars. So what is that? Let's. let's I, I just want to see what that is. So that is 21,000 American dollars. Now, you know, I can't say if that's a great value or not because I don't really know the the specs on it. I think the only thing I do know is that it has a four cylinder. I think it's a 2.4 liter four cylinder, um, which would make sense. That would put it sort of kind of a little bit under maybe the Honda Accord for 21,000, more in this Honda Civic range. And this is bigger. This is a mid-size car. So it's a mid-size car, middle, middle class mid-size car. There's certain parameters uh, it doesn't mean a mid-sized car has to be that exact. There's not exact one number, but you know, between a certain amount of inches and a certain amount of inches, that makes it a mid-sized car. And within mid-sized cars, some mid-sized cars can be a tidbit smaller in the mid-sized segment. They can be, or they can be a little bit bigger before they either graduate to being classified as a full-size car or small enough to go down a class to a subcompact or a compact car, right? So this is a mid-sized car. So with a 2.4 liter mid-sized car, I think this is a lot of value. Um, and, you know, if they're using Toyota motors, you know, because I think I've seen a picture where they had an iForce V8 in the truck we're about to look at. So if they're using Toyota motors, I don't know what that 2.4 would come from because I haven't really, like, I'm, I haven't really looked into Toyota lately as far as the four cylinders um they might have a 2.4 liter in the rav4 toyota rav4 they might have one in the corolla maybe i know they have a one point something liter maybe 1.8 liter they might have a two liter in the corolla right now and then they might have a 2.4 liter but it's but it's probably definitely a toyota four cylinder at some point even if they got it from china it's probably a toyota four cylinder because china is getting their motors and a lot of their stuff from Japan, obviously, because you know there's a lot of startups in China as well, car companies. The, the car industry is somewhat new in China as well. Probably a little bit older in Africa, but still new nonetheless. Um, but I like the way it looks. When you look at the interior, I like it for 21,000. I don't really think it's bad, uh, to be honest with you. And I, and I would compare this, even though it's a mid-sized car, I would compare this obviously to subcompacts, which, which are right under it. Uh, the best subcompacts, which would be the Toyota Corolla and the Honda Civic and, you know, a couple other. Um, and I would even throw maybe the Ford Focus in there. They don't make it anymore, but they, they, they discontinued it in America. But I think in Europe, they're still making it. But they just stopped making it maybe a year or two ago, if I'm correct. Um, but if you look at the interior for $21,000, $21,000, you get a mid-sized car with a 2.4 liter that's probably a Toyota, if I'm correct, Toyota motor, which is reliable. Uh, which that's amazing for a person that just wants to look, doesn't care about speed and handling as much as maybe I do, but just wants a car that's bigger for space, for the family, for the friends, a little bit luxurious looking. I don't really know what Katanka is. I don't know if Katanka is a, well, it's definitely not a luxury brand. I'll just say that. It, it, it They might eventually try to be a luxury brand and an economy brand at the same time, which would be like something like Toyota where you have the you know Corolla or... Uh, smaller cars than that and then you go all the way up to the Toyota Avalon even the TRD or fully loaded which probably can go close to 60,000 American dollars I usually don't suggest that for any car company granted Toyota does it because they have Lexus too right or Honda does it because they have Acura as their luxury brand right but I usually wouldn't say that a car company should do that because people are going to know you for economy cars to to mid-size uh you know economy slash sporty cars and if you put yourself in that class sort of like mazda right now you know mazda's trying to move up scale up class that's why you look at all 
the Mazdas in really almost any country, unless it's you know a country that their their business model is basically to sell smaller cars, but any major huge country uh, like America, Japan, whatever, blase this, blase that, Mazda is moving up scale. If you didn't notice, Mazda for the last five years has they've let people know they're aiming at BMW, they're aiming at certain things. So that's why the products at Mazda keep getting higher and higher every year a little bit a little bit a little bit the new cx5 is about to be rear wheel drive and it's about to be an inline six if you're making a crossover uh which cx5 would be a mid-size crossover i would guess you would say or just a, a you know smaller mid-size truck if you're making that and you're making that rear wheel drive like a bmw x3 then you know your goal is to compete with higher brands luxury brands because it's more expensive in this day and age, obviously, to make a rear wheel drive car and have an inline six, to be honest with you, when you already have so many V6s that you could use. So with that, all that being said, um, when I look at this car, the interior for 21,000, I think is, is good. It's a great start. It's really a great start. I would say this is a very great start for 21,000. I feel like it's somewhat luxurious, right? I wouldn't say it's as high as the heavy hitters, which I wouldn't expect it to be. This is a newer car brand for a couple years. I wouldn't say that it's as good as a Honda Accord, right? Or um, what else? A Toyota Camry interior wise. But I like the way that they kept the interior simple in the, in the simple fact that a lot of car brands either don't do enough or they do the most inside of the interior and even for the outside design. So I like how simple it is because when you, a lot of times when you do simple designs, I think a lot of people don't realize this, every generation you can build upon it. So you can look at it and say, hey, you know, maybe these vents should be shaped a little bit more instead of a square, maybe we'll give it a certain shape that, you know, resembles a, uh, a Ordinka Ghanaian symbol or ancient Ghanaian, you know, symbol or, something that came from the past and maybe we'll shape it like that right so you can see what you've done and then you can refine it slowly 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 refine it and see what you can get better and that's what turns into a great product i always think that simplicity at the beginning especially simplicity is the best thing for any car company any car company look at porsche what does porsche do porsche slowly changes things i'm not saying that i'm with the porsche train where people you know they just like getting taxed you know they have to pay a lot of money because it is a porsche in certain areas right like the interior whatever buzz this buzz that because i obviously I, I like porsche's interiors but mercedes-benz makes the best interior in the game it just is what it is mercedes-benz makes the best interiors and i'm a japanese guy just to let you know how truthful i'm being with you guys mercedes-benz makes the best interiors but even with that said, when you look at Porsche's interiors or their design, Porsche 911 specifically, that model, when you look at the design over, you know, 40, 50, 60 years, they've slowly refined it and made this just change a little bit and that change a little bit and this change a little bit. And that's why the Porsche 911 is one of the most iconic classic sports cars that there are in the world right now because of the small refinements and also because of the community of Porsche people that are very critical about how the design is. And, you know, Porsche listens to a lot of the people that buy their cars in some aspects, right? And they know that Porsche fans don't really want to see a huge change at one time, but over time. And they want to see what has gotten better over time. So I don't think that this interior is bad by any means. Um, the interior, from what I can see right here, I would say maybe is this a little, this might be a different picture but from this interior from what i can see right here i would say that in not knowing when this car came out maybe a couple within the last couple of years i would give this interior a a solid seven that's what i would give it i would give this interior a solid seven kantanka um i love the gauges the gauges yes keep the gauges they're actually build on those gauges get better backlights more expensive backlights put more bulbs inside of each individual gauge to give it more of a, a luxury appeal uh make the gauges maybe you know a little bit bigger and add more information into the gauges maybe make the screen or who hmm, here's an idea maybe the next generation kantanka don't even add physical gauges because this is not a sports car and since this is not a sports car 
right? Maybe like economy slash luxury, somewhat luxury car. Put a screen in the middle. Not a screen in the middle and in, 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 in where the uh, the dash, where the radio and stuff is, which that would be good too. But put a screen in the actual gauge cluster. Just virtual. Make it all virtual. And I think then you can mitigate your risk as far as people liking your design. And you can also save more money because when you use a monitor or a screen in the middle, we've been using them for, in the racing world. I have a friend that has, you know, spent a couple hundred dollars on it, but there's actually aftermarket gauge clusters that are all virtual. And the benefit of that, I would say for Kantanka is that you can change the design of the gauge clusters virtually and maybe even, you know, have somebody just come in that's a, a, a I don't know what software designer or something like that and have them change the configuration of how things you know slide to the right or slide down or how they appear when the car first comes on and then you can have a, a designer right uh, a, like a virtual graphics designer and they can design uh, nice designs for your gauges so i think that would actually be a great move it might be actually cheaper too uh if you bought them in bulk mass and then you know you can just update the way the gauges look virtually so I think this interior is definitely a seven. Uh, the screen in the middle, I think that's nice as far as the radio. I have no problem with that. But I think with the next generation, what I would like to see is a very, very beautiful formed dash across. And then maybe a screen uh, that's implemented into the top part with a clock right here where the, the clock is at. Um, I think that's what I would, I would I would like to see the next generation. But I think it's a, it's a great design. I think this car is really nice. Um, 21,000? Yeah, I would say go ahead and do it. I mean, you know, 21 American dollars, you know, I don't know if that exactly translates in Ghana to 21,000 American. Well, probably wouldn't. Obviously, people in Ghana per capita don't make as much as people in America. So obviously this car, I'm saying, oh, only 21,000, even though I wouldn't even buy a new car. I don't even buy new cars. I, I like depreciation. I like to wait until they depreciate. That's what I love because you really are probably paying the real value for what the car was really uh worth or how it was made depending on what car it is sports cars yeah they might not never come really far down for like 20 30 years but cars like this yes i would wait but if you need a car and you're going to buy a car i would say for twenty one thousand, which is in probably in ghana would probably be a little bit more expensive so let's just i'm just throwing it out there let's say that this might be thirty thousand dollars for a, a regular ghanaian person or thirty five thousand american dollars right um you know i would say it's expensive, but if it was somewhere around that $21,000 range, I would definitely say for sure, yes, you know, go ahead and buy it. I think it looks nice. I think that it does what it needs to do. I think it's luxurious enough. Um, and I think the only other thing that I, even from this standpoint right here, like this looks like a great car. It almost sort of reminds me of an Audi A4 a little bit. Um, so no, I think it's right. And, and, and just to put it in, oh, this is the back. I was trying to get it back. I don't know if this picture is clear, but this back angle, nice. Also, another thing I would change, I don't know if this picture, goes, yeah. The only thing I would change also too is the font, right? And I have some, I have some ideas that I came up with that I wanted to share with you guys. And if Kantanka is watching, I think it would be very interesting for them to look at this. So the font, I don't think the font is bad really. But I think that Kantanka, the actual word, the badge right here, I think that, that the lettering should be spread apart. So like a space in between each letter, letter would give it maybe a better flow and feel and maybe make it seem just a little bit more luxurious. And then obviously the uh, text over here of the actual name of the car, I think maybe a better font, maybe, uh, I don't think that the cursive is bad, but maybe a different type of cursive or maybe a, a, a better font and maybe the placing of the badges, right? All these things really matter a lot. So the placing of the badges, I think maybe if you move this up to right here, you know, next to the symbol on the trunk, I think that would make it look better. But outside of that, this is a great design, I think, you know? And also I wanna say that this car is the same. I already checked the like length of the car, the millimeters. So this car is the same size as the Audi A5, just to keep that in your mind. So you're getting the same length of the A5. Now the interior space, that might be different. The trunk space might be different. I would suspect that the A5 might have a little bit better trunk space because it, as you can see, it's a lift back or like a hatchback shape. Um, so it's basically, yeah, it's like a hatchback. If 
five door hatchback. So this was naturally a hatchback has more space. It's just nat it's just a common thing. Obviously the whole uh, back of the rear window opens up. So, but if you've ever been in an Audi A5, then that's going to be the length of the, the Katanka, the, the car. So let's go to their small, I would say compact to subcompact uh, crossover. Now, this is what I wanna say, Katanka. This is what I wanna say to my brother, the owner of Katanka, if you see this, right? Or any other car people. Right now, in America at least, can't say in Africa, but I would sort of kind of think it is, to be honest with you, trucks in general, more bigger off-road maybe trucks that can go on different terrains. But crossovers are all the rage right now in a lot of the world, especially in North America. And this crossover, I think this is where your money is, Kantanka. This is where your money is right here. I'm not saying get rid of your small sedan, but if you think about it, this crossover could possibly save you money if you did get rid of the, your small sedan because this crossover technically is sort of kind of the same size. And if the model is the same way in Ghana and Africa, which I don't know for sure, but I, I it, it's hard for me not to believe it isn't um, because this is the trends I follow. It's already a truck, so it already has more utility. It's already a little bit higher up. I would say if you're going to get rid of something, get rid of the smallest car that you have and just keep this crossover to be honest with you, because this crossover is nice. This crossover, I think, is spot on what Kantanka should do, what they could, should carry into their other cars as far as placement of the tail lights, the placement of everything. This back end is very nice. This looks very luxurious to me. I'm loving this, Kantanka. This looks very luxurious to me. This looks like the back of a Mercedes-Benz crossover, which is a great thing because they, they make great looking cars, not reliable cars, but they make great looking cars. Those are two different things. I hope people realize that. <laughs> I don't know when people are gonna realize about reliability. Reliability is a very important thing. Just because you have a nice looking car, if you can never drive it, then it's not as great in the sense of reliability. You know, it depends on if you care about style more than reliability. I like both. That's why I love Japanese cars and hopefully, if I could get one of these Kantanka cars over to America or when I come to Africa, then yo, I'll be driving an African car. Wouldn't that be so dope to drive an African car in America? That'd be so dope. So I like the tail lights. I like the placing of the badges. This one right here, like I said, I think that if you put Kantanka right here, right where the windshield wiper is right there, maybe, well, the windshield wipers might be in the way, but if you could somehow put Kantanka right here i don't even know if that's possible there's a windshield wiper but it would be dope if you could if you could put katanka right there and you spread it out a little bit i think that would make it perfect luxury from the rear luxury it's gonna look like money just like a ghana just like a ghana king or queen needs to be riding it's gonna look like money for a crossover i like that it's really nice the proportions from the side not the biggest fan of the rim design i think a more a rim that has more spokes, right? A lot of spokes, small spokes, and is like a flat gray or flat silver would really, really give this car a little bit more class. I get it. It's probably not a very, very expensive luxury crossover. It's more of an economy crossover, maybe. I don't know what direction they're going with this. It might be a luxury crossover. I don't know. I could be wrong. But if it is, even if it isn't, I think changing the wheels to a higher class wheel uh, design would scream more, okay, even if we aren't a luxury crossover, you know, it's a little bit more sophisticated. And, you know, I, I, I think that, but the side profile, the only thing I would change is I think the front end needs to be lengthened just a little, just a tidbit longer. The front end just needs to be just a little bit longer. And I think the headlights, from a side view, I think everything else works. If you could just make it a little bit longer, it's sort of kind of giving me like BMW X1 vibes, you know what I'm saying? Or like Mercedes, like from the front, BMW X1, and then the back, like sort of kind of like Mercedes uh, GLA, GLB vibes, you know what I'm saying? So, nah, this is very, very interesting, very interesting. From the front, I think it's, uh, I think it's a great design. I really do. I think it's a good design. I think this is a great, I think this is a hit to be honest with you. 
I don't know what the numbers are of selling these Kantankas in Ghana, but if you're from Ghana, you can afford it, man. You should support your own because, yo, at the end of the day, the only way that Kantanka is going to get to the class that you want if you're not a fan of your like people, African brands or whatever, is if you support these brands. And once you support these brands, they're going to have more ways, more revenue and more connections to buy better quality material stuff and employ more people locally. It's a win-win if you just buy these cars and, you know, not necessarily something else. I obviously don't have that option. And, you know, I love Japanese cars. It's too late for me now. Don't get me wrong. I'll add African cars to my stable. I definitely will. You know, if I can get a Katanka and bring it to America, that would be hot. But, you know, for a lot of people that might look at it and be like, hey, man, like, believe me, I've seen car companies come from the bottom and go all the way to the top. I mean, look at Hyundai. Who would ever thought Hyundai would be in the position they're in? Hyundai is really, really gaining steam in this world. I mean, making great cars, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, they got the right designer and it is what it is, you know, that this they're, they're making higher quality cars uh, from the 80s and 90s, you know, or since the 80s and 90s. So, yeah, I think this design is really nice. Um, Look, look, we got a, a beautiful black woman from Ghana right next to it. I think it's this is a hit, you know? I think this is nice. I think the white, to me personally, is better than the orange, um, you know? But it's good, you know? If people, if you don't know, there's like a lot of different paint colors and some paint is more high quality, some paint is less quality and it doesn't look as good and some colors work better on certain body lines. So, but for what it is, I think it's really nice. This is the interior of the K71. So, hey man, I actually like this design. See, the reason I really like this design is because there's a little bit more shapes within the dash in the middle part and the side. And I like that. And I think that that's sort of kind of something that has to be implemented into Ghanaian and African cars, the African DNA. We need to start seeing after the first two, three generations, what is the DNA of an African, a person of African descent or a black person? What is that? What does that look like? What is your culture? Because that has to be implemented into the car. So when you look at your ancient Ghanaian culture, or African culture in general, wherever you're at in the world or in Africa, you got to look at your symbols, the way that your ancestors draw things, right? The way that the art is like very African. So some things are a little bit exaggerated, like maybe the long necks in certain cultures or maybe the, it's the symbols implement those into your car. Design language that is Italian design language or Swedish or Japanese or American comes from the thoughts of people, what they see, how they create things, how they make their tables, how they make their refrigerators. All these things go into the design as far as like shapes and how what materials in the ethos, right? The 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 ethos behind a car. So I think that's great. And it's look, man, it's, it's five speed or six speed. You know, in America, people look at that and think it's crazy for a, a crossover truck to be that. But in Africa and like the most of the world, people still drive stick. I drive stick, so I would love to drive that. You know what I'm saying? But I have no problem with automatic for like a crossover. I get it. You know, it's, it's easy. It's more luxurious. It's funny because back in the day, everybody around the world drove stick, like in the 30s, 40s, 50s. And then when automatics came along, automatics was really for rich people. Automatics were a luxury. And once the technology to mass produce automatics, uh, got so good, then automatics became cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And now automatics are normal in most cars, obviously, you know, in the Western world, maybe not Africa or Asia. And automatics are looked at as being like, okay, this is a normal thing. When at one point automatics was a, a luxury, you, you know, it was a, oh man, it was a new technology. It was like, oh man, I got three speed automatic, two speed automatic, four speed automatic. Like it was a, it was a, a luxury. And you know, it's interesting how a lot of people in the West don't really drive stick anymore unless you're into sports cars. This is very interesting. So let's move on to the next vehicle offered by Kantanka. This looks like to me, maybe a full size, could be a mid-size truck, but let's just say it's a full size truck. Yeah, probably mid-size, let's say mid-size. I got a little apple juice, so you guys might see that from time to time as well. But this is a 4x4 SUV. This truck has a V8. Now it has an iForce V8, if I'm correct. And when you see iForce V8, especially if you're a Japanese guy, the first thing that pops in your head is Toyota. So this is probably, they're probably, Kantanka's probably using a Toyota V8, which is a, you're smart. I mean, you already probably know you're in Africa, you have a lot of Japanese cars, but if you know about some of the most reliable V8s, like the Chevy LS series V8s, like the LS1, LS7, these are very reliable V8s, right? But when it comes to the Japanese world, you know, 
Nissan and I think their their VH old school VH uh, 4.5 liters DEs V8s and uh, Toyotas like five liter V8s that are probably in the Toyota Tundra right now. I don't know if they're still in the Toyota Tundra right now, but maybe a year, a couple years ago. Toyota makes very, very reliable V8s. If you didn't know, Lexus is Toyota's luxury brand. So Toyota and Lexus, they share a lot of the same motors, of course, naturally, right? It's good for business and they're reliable. So a lot of Lexus is the reason that Lexus is one of the most reliable brands in the world, as well as Acura, because they use their same motors that they use in Toyota into their Lexus, right? And they just might, you know, add a couple things to give it more horsepower, more torque. But I think that four liter, I think it's a 4.7 liter V8, if I'm correct, that's a very proven V8. It's been around for a long, 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 long time. 20 years, 15 years, I don't know. But when you have a motor that is constantly around for 12, 10 years, 20 years, that motor is probably the motor you want to go with because it's been refined at such a high level. Every time, every year the car comes out, people buy it and they say, oh, what broke and what didn't break? What's the weak points of this car or this engine and the suspension? What didn't? And then they always improvise and make it better. Every year they make it better and better and better. That's the Japanese philosophy. So if you look at this and you have that V8 in this Kantanka truck, you know you're going to get reliability right and eventually hopefully when Katanka gets bigger they will create their own engines if they don't already i could be a little behind here i live in america i'm just trying to piece all the information i can get together and if we look at this you have to look at the ethos of what an african truck would be do we care about reliability do we care about speed i feel like when it comes to the african world you can have everything you have reliability you have speed so i feel like it's going to be a hybrid between Japanese cars and like European cars in, this, in the psychology and the philosophy behind it is that in Africa, you can have everything. You have all the natural resources, you can have reliability and you can have power. It can be really fast. And what I would love to see on this truck down the road, just what I would love to see before I talk about how it looks, I would love to see a supercharger. If you're going to continuously to use the Toyota motors, supercharger we already know lotus does it throw a supercharger on it just give it a a higher version right with a supercharger and i'm actually going to go into that towards the end of the video about maybe a, a racing program for kantanka which would be the next step down the road maybe 10 20 years from now when they really get a foothold and they become a huge brand maybe outside of ghana around the world they're they actually sell to surrounding countries in ghana too like countries that surround ghana but when they get worldwide which i believe in kantanka and i know that they will Thinking about a racing department for Kantanka. Woo! I'm getting excited talking about it. A racing department for Kantanka, just like BMW has the M division, right? For their racing for more sportier M3s. Okay, a regular woman, she wants a three series, but maybe another woman that's in the cars or a man, they want an M3. Or they or or maybe they want to meet in the middle. They don't want a three series, but they don't want a full out hardcore M3 that's luxury, but more sport then they would go in the middle and maybe get like a M3 whatever, you know, I, you know, so it's like a, it has the suspension of an M3, but it doesn't maybe have the motor. It might have a little bit more horsepower, but it might not be as extreme, right? And so thinking Audi, Audi has the Audi A4, then they have the Audi S4, then they have the Audi RS4, right? Every company has a racing di uh, division for the most part. Uh, and so it would be like Toyota TRD. I think it's changed to Gazoo Racing now, but TRD, uh, which I, I hope they never get rid of, they shouldn't fully, or like a Honda Type R, right? Um, Lexus, like a Lexus IS350. Then they have a Lexus ISF, which is a V8. Fast, the suspension's better, the brakes are bigger, the rotors are better, the interior's better. It just makes a very dynamic, faster, better handling car for excitement. And I would love to see Kantanka. I have some ideas for you, brother. If you see this, that was Kantanka. I have a lot of great ideas that I'm actually gonna show at the end of the video. But this truck, since we know it has a, a V8, reliable V8, and this truck seems pretty luxurious. It actually reminds me of a Lexus somewhat, which, which is a great thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I have no problem with it. You know, when you first start out, you always mimic people. In the car world, people, you know, it's a very common thing. It's very common culture in the car world to mimic other people until you get your foothold. And I have no problem with that. A lot of people might because they don't understand the car world. And I'm not even saying that that's even the right way to go about it because some people don't. 
Some car companies don't, but a lot of car companies, I'd say the majority, they, you know, they're trying to find their way. They're new at making cars. When you're new at doing something, there's really not a problem at looking at somebody that's successful that's doing something and trying to implement the things that they do. And then eventually, once you get your foothold, you go your own way and you create your own identity. It happens all the time. It happens in hip hop, happens in music, it happens in a lot of things people don't realize. But the design of this car, I would automatically out the gate, like from what I see, the side profile, this is like a nine. This is very high for me. I think this is a very nice looking truck. This is nice. I think the wheels are nice. Um, I think the emblem right in the middle like that is nice. I just think that this is a great truck. You know, it looks sort of expensive. I don't know how expensive it would be for people in Ghana. I don't know if this is an affordable truck at all. I don't think it doesn't look like it looks more on the luxurious side. So if that was the case, then, you know, I wouldn't expect a common person in Ghana or even in America to be able to afford something like this because, you know, it's geared towards being a luxury truck. That's sort of kind of what it looks like to me. I could be wrong about that, but that's sort of kind of what it looks, looks like to me. But I think it's I think it's great. I think it's very good. It has good curb appeal. It just looks nice. It looks very good. I, I like it. I think it, it works. Um, let's let's say see. see here's one in black, you know. I just really think it works. It really is great. I like the design. I think the front, like I was saying about the entry level car earlier, I think the front has got it down. I'm not really a huge fan of a lot of chrome in the front at first, but I understand the concept of it. I think the design of it, like the 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 claws and the way that the black stars in the front and the front bumper, I just think it's a it's a great design. You know, even if it's something that you have to look at and be like, hey, okay, how are we going to build upon this? Even if it's not ours or it's not our engine or our full design, how are you gonna build upon this to make it better and eventually have even more distinct Ghanaian and African uh, cues and culture implemented into this truck? I think it's a great, I think this is, would probably be a hit for people that can afford it. I don't even know, let's see. Um, I don't know if this is the inside of it or not. Maybe I should go back. I don't really know if that's the inside. I didn't really uh, pronounce the name because I, I don't really want to mess it up. But let's say on an on a netifo, on a netifo. My people in Ghana, let me know if I pronounce that right. On an on a netifo, on a netifo. So the Kantanka on a netifo, four by four SUV. I could be butchering that and not saying it right, but I think it's a great design. I really do. I think it's, I think it's really good. Um, and, and we, we can look at a little bit more. So from the side profile, we already know this is an amazing car. You know, it looks really great right here. Um, interior. Now I think the one problem I have with this interior, I have two problems with this interior. First problem I have with this interior, the outside looks amazing, but when you get inside of the interior into this truck, into this dash, it does not look as great as the outside looks. Um, of course, you know, like I said, it's stick. We know this. It's Africa, Asian markets. A lot of things are going to be stick, going to be manual, not automatic. Um, I don't really know the exact reason for that, but I would say probably that manuals are actually cheaper to produce uh, than automatics nowadays, especially some of the advanced automatics. Uh, that's just my guess as a car guy, because, you know, it sort of switched where at one point, you know, automatics was luxury. It was a rich man's thing, but now automatics have become uh, so advanced and, 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 and somewhat complicated, depending on if you're talking about like a dual clutch uh, or a regular automatic, more performance automatics or whatever, get tregs or whatever it might be. But the interior, I like the square clock in the middle. I think that's great. But the whole interior has got to go. The dash, not the interior, but the whole dash has got to go. I'm just being real with you, brother. For how it looks on the outside, the, the inside, I feel like brings it down. The small screen in the middle already magically to me shows me that the dash does not go with the exterior. When you look at the exterior, you think, you know, prestige, you think, you know, class, you, that's what you think. And when you get in here, I'm not saying it doesn't have that, but the screen is very small. So it doesn't go with the ideology and ethos of having luxury, which is something bigger. You have the luxury to even have a truck, something bigger, whether it's luxury or not luxury, you have the luxury of having something bigger. So the interior should, take the cues of that and that small screen is not going to work inside it needs to be a bigger screen i get it you guys are a newer company so i'm not mad at that but i'm just saying in the future it has to be a bigger screen the dash the ergonomics the ergonomics of the inside of a car is a very important look up ergonomics if you don't know what ergonomics means but technically ergonomics is like 
the dash and how things are placed inside of the interior those are very important things the glass but more so the dash and the ergonomics of this is not making me feel the same way as it would on the outside i think the whole dash needs to go and i think the dash doesn't necessarily need to come all the way down to where the shifter is i think the dash should maybe stop uh and go straight across and i think there should be more focus on if we're just looking at like right here where the clock is and where the uh all these buttons are less buttons less buttons bigger screen redesign the dash virtual gauge cluster cluster right not 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 physical even though i get it you know tablets and stuff like that or screens it's not that cheap compared to you know maybe uh um, um like these types of things which at the end of the day they're just small pieces of plastic and materials and numbers that's printed on uh, uh, some kind of material and bam you have a gauge cluster and then there's a motor that makes them move but i think if you could find a good uh supplier to supply screens make the whole screen virtual and then redo the dash to where it goes straight across it doesn't come like down towards the shifter it just stops like right at the right under the the clock it just stops and goes straight across and redesign it and give it a very clean sleek design maybe even add like a square not a square but like a, a rectangle that goes across and add little ordinka symbols or add one ordinka symbol and say the meaning of that ordinka symbol to show more pride and distinctiveness of being from ghana right i I, th I think that would be very very that would fit that would make this truck a hit if you could do that i think that would make this truck a hit and then the interior when i look at the seats when i look at the when i look at the door panels this interior I'm not saying it's a bad. I think the color combinations are okay. I think instead of black, there should just be all tan or all brown and maybe like little hints of different colors, uh, you know, for special additions. If you look at this, are all brown, maybe with the, the, the symbol in the headrest, I think that would be nice. But when I look at this in the, the interior, I see that there was a lot of money that was spent on the outside, but it, the money wasn't the money power wasn't spent evenly or more or so in the right places. The interior is okay, but I think that it doesn't look as good inside as it does on the outside. And I think the seats, the 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 fitment of the leather or leatherette, which is like a synthetic um, leather, I think that it needs to be, the refinement of it needs to step up the quality. Uh, you know, whoever might be the seamstress or the person that's stitching uh, this, you know, this together, you know, there has to be a higher quality uh, and a higher level of work for how the truck looks on the outside. And I think that's the only thing that I would change about that. I think this is a pretty good, you know, for what it's trying to be. But I think it's supposed to be like within the, you know, affordable, bigger trucks, not necessarily a luxury truck. So I'm not going to go too hard on it. But even for that, like if you look at, you know, uh, midsize trucks around the world from other companies, you know, the quality needs to be a little bit higher. I get it. It might be more so on the utility, like a little bit of luxury side, but it needs to be a little bit higher. But I'm not really mad at it. I think it's a pretty good truck overall. You know, I think I would give it an eight. I think the interior just needs to to change to catch up with the outside look. So this is what I'm going to do from here. We looked at almost all the cars. There's actually uh, there's a pickup truck, too, as well. I think Kentonka offers, but it's probably pretty similar to that SUV, probably with the back end just you know, cut off and made into a pickup truck, you know, slash SUV pickup truck. So I had some ideas before we end the video. Um, and I'm just going to go to them right now. Uh, and I, I actually go, I'll go back as soon as my computer loads and stop being so slow. I have so many things up. This is the design that I made for Kantanka. This is something that I'm not saying that Kantanka has to change. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that. But this is something, a design that I just showed for examples and something that I think would be amazing to see if Kantanka ever thought about either refreshing their logo or actually changing their logo, right? So I came up with this logo of what I think maybe in the future Kantanka could use as far as maybe if they wanted to change their logo or refresh their logo. Not saying that they have to, like I said, no disrespect, but this is my take on Kantanka and the way that I would want to see Kantanka go. So with this design that I have right here, I chose a Ordinka symbol. And I know that the Kantanka 
Ghana star. I think it's the black star. Uh, it's on the flag, the Ghana flag. So that's why they chose that. And I have no problem with that. But I feel like with the star, it's a very, it's a harder design to make look very, very professional. I don't know. Something about a star, even though no disrespect to Ghana or the flag, something about that star on a car, maybe it uh, needs a different design. It looks very, it looks somewhat, it doesn't look the level of Kantanka that I feel like when I say Kantanka, like the way it should look and the way it should feel. And this is just my opinion, right? You can take it with a grain of salt. But I picked, I looked at some of the Erdinka symbols and I chose this one, which I really love. You know, if you guys don't know Erdinka symbols, they're symbols from Ghana. They're very traditional symbols. So the Erdinka symbols were created by the Ashanti people in Ghana. And the one that I chose, even though there's a lot, is the fortitude symbol. And this fortitude, uh, the definition of fortitude is courage in pain or adversity. So if you're going through an illness or sickness and you're scared, you still have courage, right? And so I picked that because I thought that would be a, a maybe a good slogan. Uh, so the Ordinka symbol of fortitude, and you could say your slogan, courage in adversity, right? So I chose that symbol. I've always actually loved that symbol. I was thinking about getting that tattooed on me. But I love that symbol, so I chose that symbol for a Kantanka logo, right? And I spaced out the letters, which gives it an airy feel, which gives it like a, a, a serious, sophisticated, somewhat luxury feel. Um, so I spread out the words Kantanka. So between the K, the A, the N, T, A, N, K, A is a space. Right, and I use the Rodinka symbol, and that could be a very simple, sophisticated symbol that represents this uh, Ghanaian brand, and I think it's really nice. And let me know what you guys think. So, with that symbol being created, I then thought, okay, what happens when Kantaka gets bigger? Right? What happens when they want to expand? It's almost like once you can get down your natural needs as a human, as far as eating and something to drink in a shelter, then you can expand on or look into trying to advance in technology or advance in like psychology or the human existence and why we're here and all this kind of stuff. So you have to get your the basis of any company or you as a human you need food, shelter, water before you can start thinking about things that are, I want to say less important, but not as vital as existing and staying alive. And like Kantanka, like companies, they're like humans, they're their own entities that have uh, human rights in some aspects. It's a company. Once you get the basis down of Kantanka, I said, hey, I'm pretty sure people in Africa love to race. I know a lot of black people that love to race in America, in Africa. And I said, hey, after they get this down, people in Ghana probably gonna wanna race. And they're probably gonna wanna develop their cars to be faster and better handling and eventually get into motorsports, right? There's a lot of rally in Africa throughout history. There's been a lot of rally, safari rallies and everything. Toyota, Honda, other people have, have, have been there and competed. So I said, hey, if Africa holds rallies and, so, and you know safari rallies and things of that nature in, in, in the world of rally racing and has a lot of racing come to Africa, why would we not develop a racing division for Kantanka. Hey, I'm just throwing it out there for the future. Woo! I'm getting excited. Man, it's about to be hot. I'm getting excited. So for Kantanka, once they get on their feet and they're doing their thing and they become a worldwide brand, maybe before that, we can introduce this, what I call AIM. AIM will be Kantanka's racing development, right? The racing arm. So AIM stands for Accra International Motorway, AIM. So on the side of the cars, you might have a Kantanka sports car. And then this version of that car will say AIM with this symbol on the back, AIM. And that will let you know that this is a fast, special version. And I really, the one of my biggest design cues that I, I sort of took from was I was researching, if we look here, about, um, where is it at, right here? So first I was looking at the capital of Ghana, the Accra map. And the one thing that stood out to me is, you know, I didn't really see a loop, right? Like a loop highway that goes maybe from like the ocean all the way around. I mean, you could say that maybe there's like little small highways that connect it, but like an actual loop, like in my city where I live, there's like a loop around the whole city, the, the main, the, 
uh, downtown cities in the middle and then there's a loop around it. So I saw this, so I saw the Tima motorway, if I'm pronouncing that right, I hope I am. And that really inspired me. I mean, look at this long stretch of road, of highway. That just looks like racing, even if it's just drag racing, right? In Japan, they have a, a, a form of racing. Uh, they, people still do it, but maybe not as, as intense and as hardcore and as underground as Tokyo was in the 90s, in the 80s. But there's uh, something called the Wangan, right? The Wangan or like the, there's a famous loop in Tokyo. So I was like, whoa, since I watch a lot of to Japanese stuff and Japanese car stuff and racing and TV shows about cars and stuff like that and animes, car animes, right? They have like animation about cars in the car world. I said, look, let me go look to the crowd map and let me look at this and see what I could find for racing development. And the most beautiful thing to me was when companies name uh, some of their special editions or models or their racing development, like Fuji heavy industries for like uh, Subaru and stuff like that, when they name it after something from their country. So I just took that idea and I said, hey, why not look at this? It seems like the biggest long stretch of highway that I can see near Accra. It's the closest one, it's the longest one in Accra. And I said, there, there's a project that's almost complete, right? the highway and i'm pretty sure not that i'm saying i condone it but i'm pretty sure that in like in any major city around the world like accra is a big city in this world right uh, it's uh, everybody knows ghana and even if they don't know accra <laughs> at some point they will because it's the major city accra is a major city and if we have highways like this then that inspires racing. That inspires, even though I'm not saying I condone it, there's going to be people that are going to race. Any big city has underground scenes when it comes to cars, when it comes to art, when it comes to music. And there's no different in the car world. There's always going to be an underground scene. There's always going to be people racing on the road. But because I didn't know of any racetracks, I thought, hey, what would be the first, where would be the first place that, um, Kantanka would maybe test their cars at. And naturally, it's probably gonna be on the highway. I don't know if there's any racetrack, a lot of racetracks in Ghana. I really don't know, and somebody could probably tell me in the comments, but it's probably gonna be on the highway. So with that being said, I picked the name for their performance side of the Kantanka company, the racing arm, the racing development side of Kantanka as Accra International Motorway, AIM, right? AIM for short, that will be on the back of the car. And then the, Meaning behind AIM is Accra International Motorway. I think that's hot, man. Woo! I think that's hot. You know what I'm saying? I really think that's hot. So, you know, as you, we looking into the future, you know, we're, we're, we're doing wishful thinking, but it's amazing because this is, a, this is a big possibility. This is a very big possibility. So much so to where at some point, a typical Ghanaian will be proud and, and understand that Kantanka has a racing uh, development. So if somebody said, hey man, I got a BMW M3, or I have a Lexus ISF, or I have a Nissan GTR Nismo edition, right? You could be like, oh, well I have a Kantanka, whatever it might be, AIM, right? So I thought that was pretty dope. Um, and you know, I'm into cars and I'm into racing, so I really got excited about that. And so the last part, that I developed was I just developed just a little like quick, you know, with the same color scheme, just to give it a little example of like, you know, color scheme, shapes, whatever, maybe a little bit of inspiration, but I also did a quick. So Kentucky Motor Company, this is sort of kind of things that I would like to see because I'm a person of African descent and it's like, look, I, I would love to maybe one day invest in Kentucky. Maybe I'll work for Kentucky one day, right? Maybe I'll take my skills to Kentucky. And since I'm a person of African descent, I feel like to to say what I want as a customer, a potential customer in the future, and to say what I wanna see is a very, very important thing. You know, you gotta listen to your customers. I ain't bought one yet, but I'm gonna buy one in the future maybe. So Kantanka Motor Company, right? So I would like to see special editions. Down the road, I would like to see special editions. So you have the trucks, you keep, you have the trucks and the crossovers. You keep making them better, but I would like to see special editions. So I looked at the map and I saw Cocoa Beach. Coco Beach is in Ghana near Accra. So I said, why not a Coco Beach edition? That would be nice. Take what's happening on the beach and put it into the car. What's the color of the sand? Okay, 
make the interior the color of the sand. Okay, what else does the uh, uh, Cocoa Beach offer around it? Is it a luxurious place? I didn't really look it up, so I don't know. Is it not a luxurious place? Uh, whatever it might be, you can implement whatever is at that beach, and then you can implement uh, kinti cloth, right? So the interior could be a very special kinti cloth. It could be a very high quality kinti cloth. Um, the design of the kinti cloth within the interior inserts could be multiple or different or one color, but it's just a very high quality and where you put it at, there's a lot of things you could do with it. And then uh, the Kotoka edition, if I'm pronouncing that right, which is I think the airport or near the airport. I think these will be the, this will be the next level of development for Kantanka after they really, really, really get a foothold, special editions, right? Special editions. And then uh, the Kantanka performance side, like we just talked about, AIM, Accra International Motorway. So I think that would be the next step after the special editions that I would like to see. Not saying you have to do it if Kantanka sees this, but I think it's very, very amazing to create a story in history because all these car companies have a story. Most, A lot of car companies started by developing for their governments. If they were going through war, they had to develop a car after war that was cheap that the common man and woman could buy to fuel the economy they need transportation so to get places to make more money to do things they needed somewhere to have like they needed a vehicle to get there but they also needed a mass production vehicle that most people could afford and this right here will be the challenge for kantanka and the typical Ghanaian person that might want a car that might not be able to afford uh one of your cars or maybe even the lowest car is that the same way in germany with volkswagen right after uh um the the, the great war that everybody knows i don't want to go into too much in depth but after uh hitler if i'm correct they created the volkswagen beetle volkswagen beetle was for an everyday car i think even if you translate volkswagen to english it I think I, I could be very wrong about this, but I, if I'm correct, if my memory serves me right, it means like like every car, every man's car, something like that. I can't remember. There's so much car stuff. There's so much to remember. But it means something very simple. Volkswagen, if you translate it to English, means something very simple. I think, oh, the people's car. I'm pretty sure it's the people's car. So if you were in Germany, you say Volkswagen, you're really saying the people's car, even though it doesn't sound like that to you. Just, oh, Volkswagen. So if you look at that, they had to create that. Honda had to do the same thing in Japan. After the war, Toyota had to do the same thing, right? Honda, Nissan. Nissan used to be Datsun, and before Datsun, Nissan, or I'm sorry, Nissan was Datsun, and before Datsun, it was Prince. Prince Motor Company, if I'm correct. And if I'm correct, Prince Motor Company in like the th 1930s and 40s and maybe 20s, no, maybe like 1930s, 40s. I think that it was a Prince in Japan. I could be wrong about that part, but I'm, I thought if I read correctly, I watched the documentary that it was the Prince, a Prince in Japan or something like that to that effect. But what I'm trying to say is that after war, usually when the country's trying to come back up or, or when the economy's trying to come back up, the biggest challenge for Kantanka, like most car companies that don't just specialize in supercars or really expensive cars out the gate, but you gotta have a lot of money and backing to even do that. You have to find a way to make a reliable, stylish economy car that the masses can buy at the right price to where you can make money so you can develop more cars, right? but also so the average man can have pride in their country's car and also it be reliable. And that's a very hard task. It's a lot harder than what people think it is. It's very hard. Um, and with that being said, I think an another couple of things that I would like to see with Kantanka, I'm not saying they're not doing it. I wanna let you guys know, I'm not saying that they're not doing it. I'm just saying from my limited knowledge of what I would wanna see, I would say after you make money and you're bringing in revenue and you're making enough money to invest, I would say there would probably be three departments that I would invest in or four, or four, four different jobs that I would really invest in, right? Maybe five, but these are the things I would invest in. I would invest in trying to more research and development. That would be the first thing I would invest in more research and development, research and development into newer technologies coming out, research and development into technologies that you can make yourself and innovate. Right. Uh, if I'm correct, I think Kantanka actually has it to where you can start your car, one of your cars with your watch, or you can start it with an African staff 
which I thought that was pretty hot. That's that's pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? You can start your car with your watch. So, you know, you guys seem like you're sort of exploring that already, but I would like to see research and development in future technology that you can implement into the car and also research and development in how the car handles the chassis, camber, caster, you know, lower uh, uh, drag tires for better fuel efficiency. Electric cars, as much as it pains me to say, sticking in my heart, electric cars, you know, um, aerodynamics, you know, start a wing in a group. There are very many, many talented Ghanaians that might understand all these things and very versed in these subjects, right? And these, these disciplines or other people of African descent from around the world or people that are not even African descent that can come in and help and, you know, try to boost the research and development department of this company for better aerodynamics, better gas models, better interior design, better ergonomics, right? Also, after you develop more in research development, invest back into the vehicles to make them better. Do not change every two, three years. Don't change. If the sales numbers are good on certain models, keep them and continue with them. I always tell people all the time, if one model is doing bad in the company, you can keep it keep it, just refine it and really pay attention to that model and see what people are complaining about or what's going wrong and refine that. Because the number one way to sell cars after you create a great brand is to create heritage, to create a time gap, right? So if this car was around for 30, 40 years, sometimes that will tug at people's heart just because they're like, oh my God, I don't I don't want to see the Kantanka, you know, K71 or whatever it might be. I don't want to see it go away because it's been here since I was a kid or my parents used to have it or it's been around for 50 years. The heritage, right? The heritage is another thing that, that contributes to people buying cars. They know a Chevy Blazer. The new one came out. Oh, yeah, I love, love the old one. Oh, they know a Porsche 911. They know, they know a Lexus GS. It's been around for 20 something years. They love it, right? They have this heritage. And another thing I would invest in is uh in the research and development department uh, a good interior designer right like a good interior and exterior designer so good designers go around get ghana and find designers when they're young when they have the vigor when they are experimenting when they're not scared to step outside of the industry because some of us are a little too reserved in the industry and in how we design things and Find those, find those kids or younger people or even older people, people that really are hungry to design and let them, and, that, and also that have a worldly perspective on designing, let them design Kantanka cars, right? Couple designers, exterior, interior, and also the fit and finish is very important. The interior, right? The, the, the way the leather or cloth fits to the actual chair and the metal under the chair and the foam, that is very important. And come on, we're in Ghana. So we already know that Ghana has some of probably the best seamstress in the world. I mean, you know, these, especially African women are, are <laughs> making dresses and stuff. I mean, you have it. It's all there, right? Of course, it takes money. I get that. And then I would say the last thing to reinvest your money into is infrastructure, machines and infrastructures. Technology obviously is very advanced and yeah, it's very expensive. But every year or two, if you can invest in one major piece of technology that's not going to change for a very long time, or at least get you the standards that you want, and then you can upgrade from there, I think that's very important. You know, assembly line and technology. Try to figure out the best format for assembly line. The faster you, you, the faster that you make your assembly line efficient, the more efficient that you make your assembly line and the better machines that you have to produce vehicles faster, the more that you will dominate the market and the more you will be on the big stage of the world. And Kantanka Motors, I think you're on the right direction. That's really all I have for you guys today. I really, really, really enjoyed this. I mean, I love this, you know, I love cars, uh, just as much as I love culture and history. And, you know, I really hope that Kantanka and other African companies will will develop future in the future. And, you know, I think a lot of people should try to buy Kantanka and other car companies in Africa vehicles and export them and just see what you feel about them and give them feedback. Right. Because that's the only way the cars are going to get better. Um, well, one way the cars will get better. And, you know, Kantanka Motor Company or just Kantanka in general seems like it's on the right direction. Uh, and, you know, like I said, 
try to make a car that everyone can buy that everybody can afford and make it good and i'm telling you you're on your way and you know some of the design cues that i, I was speaking about and also uh the fit and finish and reliability and you're on your way you are on your way so yo guys i had a great time really appreciate it yo if anybody from katanka sees this you know you can always contact me we always have a conversation about anything not saying i'm like uh, the best person in the world but you know just from input in you know like brotherhood or sisterhood like i, I just love this stuff so please guys like me on all social medias which is african network which is instagram twitter snapchat soundcloud and facebook uh also follow me make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell notifications on there so you always get all my videos yo merch we got merchandise Go down there, and if you would be so kind, buy some merchandise. And let me know if you want to see some different kind of merchandise in the bottom. And until next time, guys, always keep driving, always support each other, always love each other, always try to learn about each other, and always try to be as diplomatic as possible. And until next time, yo, keep driving. Peace. One love.